Well, hello. Um, some of you don't know me. My name is Jeff Kessinger, and uh, Gary's got a big grin. Um, there are people who don't know me. Um, so welcome to an introduction to sculpting for 2D artists. Uh, I wanted to go over some clays, the different types of clays, the tools I use, how I build up a sculpture. And mostly it's gonna be tailored to how a 2D artist might use sculpture to help them in their frame. Because I doubt that most of you are gonna become sculptors. It's just another tool to help you with your system. All right. Um, and then at the end, I'll do a demonstration. Uh, I will try to sculpt a head so that you can see uh, kind of the full process. See how well that goes, how much time we have left. But I'm going to try to get to that. Okay. So, uh, as I said, my name is Jeff. I, I do traditional art. Uh, I don't do much digital. And... I started sculpting back in 2015. Yeah, 2015. And it just happened to be a fluke. I made something for my wife and it turned out way better than I thought. And I thought, hey, I could do this. So uh, that's how I got into it. I'll go through some of my sculpts and uh, just so you have an idea of what I create and whether it, you know, the style is if you're interested or so uh, here I've got this is a hockey player you won't be able to see it but this was a test for a commission that I did uh, I needed to figure out how to do scars on his face scars are raised very small so that's about got just a just a orc character because, and then uh, here's a more recent sculpt. I was just trying out a different clay. See my board character, but he's got a lot of stuff. The main thing I was trying out is a new type of clay called Oz clay that allows me to make things that bend instead of break. Because right now that would have snapped had it been ready to fall. Clay. So these are all. I also do, this is my clever mouse, just trying to snap the trap and not get caught. So just some random things to show. Um, people here that, that know me for sculpting more know me for my local comic book work. So I don't make comics, but uh, I like the art and the artist. So. I started out making something for making Z, for Jared George's Adventures of Z. And then as I met more people and my skills got better, I worked on a Kickstarter piece for Listen to the Thunder by Kevin Watkins and uh, Adam McLaughlin. So here's the art that they sent me for that. They wanted a werewolf that was beefy, not a scrawny werewolf. They wanted someone with some mask. So this is a reproduction of that sculpture. This is cast in resin. We'll look at the original here in a little bit. But he is, he's beefy. I think they asked me to bump up his chest a couple of times. Then, as my skills got better, here is Charlie. This is the artwork of Christopher Harris. And uh, I don't know. This multi-camera thing is a little tough. But it's a, it's a robot putting another robot out of his mystery, looking off to the side. I thought that was just such a cool shot. So. Here's the sculpture 
that came from there. So he is probably more detailed than shows up in here, but he is, it's the character and then behind here, but he is completely broken apart and wired. So he's just really detailed, really cool. Pretty proud of that piece. Still need to get it to Christopher Harris, but he doesn't live locally. He wasn't built with the ship. I also did um, the cover of Spread. I don't have the sculpture here anymore because uh, it was delivered to the artist. It was a uh, pretty cool piece to work on, and I really enjoyed the comic. Okay. Um, so that's a little bit of the work that I've done. Uh, I've got racks and racks of more sculptures, but those are some of the more interesting ones for this audience. So how does this relate to 2D artists? I don't know if any of you have this book. Take the glare off. But this is Imaginative yeah. Realism by James Gurney. Uh, he's a world-renowned painter. He does realistic stuff. And one of the things that he does is a lot of his stuff is realistic, but that's because 80% of it is from real life. You know, he uh, takes a lot of photographs of the people getting set up, uh, you know, and then adds a little bit of imagination in there, it's becoming art. So I don't know if you can see this, but on the cover here, you've got this character. But if he's working on a character that he isn't, uh, you know, doesn't really know how to render out, he will sculpt it out in clay. He will, here's the hand sculpted out uh, so that he could paint it. See the angles, the shadows, all of those things. You probably noticed while I was moving the light around on some of these, that you get different shadows. You know, if you are working on how would this be lighted, pretty handy to have a 3D object there to approximate that. Now, I've got some of those gray figures, you know, the man and the woman mannequins, where you compose them in different ways, but they, they're they pretty generic face. And so when looking at a monster or something a little more realistic, it's easier to get the chat. So I'll show a couple more sculptures here. This is my very first figure sculptor. So I look at it now and go, man, that's pretty terrible. But at the time, I was pumped. You know, I was watching The Walking Dead. I had just learned this uh, about polymer clay like i need to sculpt something let's try this off so he's got a square head and his ears are i don't know what they are it was weird um but again i was pumped when it was. so a year later i decided to sculpt the same thing but of course my skills had grown, so He's a lot better. He has, I don't know if I can get this on here, but he's got on his face, there's wrinkles and lines and stuff. He actually has ears. You know, there's just a lot more to it. So in a year, I was able to come a long way. So in that year, it was because I did a lot of golf. So these are random heads that I sculpted. You know, if you if you want to get better at something, you have to do it a lot. You can watch all the tutorials in the world and know exactly how it's done, but you got to get some hands on. It. So these are just you know, 
random heads that I sculpted over time. Gary had asked about, you know, sculptors doing uh, sketchbooks. This is kind of my sketchbook. And just like a regular sketchbook, every once in a while I'll look through here and go, hmm, that was pretty cool. I could probably do something like that, but better. But of course it takes up a lot more space than a sketchbook. Okay, um, so what I do now is I mostly take a picture of something and then crumble it back up and reuse it for something else. But when you start out early, you have that sense of everything you do is precious you know, because you, you've got it in your head that you will never be able to do that again. That's just you tricking you. You, know, that if you did it once, you can do it again. So now I just take a picture and just reuse it. Okay, so speaking of clays, I'm going to run through the five different uh, clay types, and uh, I'll try to run through them fairly quickly so we can get to the sculpt. So the first up, I'm going to go from mostly from size big to small. Uh, so first up is water-based clay. Didn't even fit the screen. He's a big fella. He's just a odd alien creature. And water-based clay is like the ceramic clay that you get at your local ceramic shop. It's super cheap and comes in a 50-pound block. So it's pretty easy to get started working on it. People who cat who uh, fire the clay. Um, they don't seem to make much detailed sculptures. I'm not sure why, uh, because this is one that's been fired and it's pretty hard. Uh, you can see here on the bottom, there's holes. That is because you have to have it hollow or when you put it in the kiln, it will explode. Uh, it's got little bones and stuff around. But anyway, uh, I sculpted this to see if I could, and uh, I had it kiln fired and it didn't explode, so I was super happy. <laughs> the next is oil-based clay. Well, the other thing about earth clay, it's dirty. Okay. So next is oil-based clay. This is monster clay and Chavon NSP medium. Uh, these things never dry out, but they also can't be baked. You know, if you bake these, they melt into a puddle. So whatever you make out of these, if you want a permanent copy, you have to make a cast. Uh, you have to make a mold and fill it with resin, make copies. Uh, I really like monster clay. I really don't like Chabon. And for me, that's because it has a smell to it that I just can't stand. I'm very sensitive to, I'm a sensitive art. I have, I'm very sensitive to like smells and stuff. So even though people say this don't have a, a smell, if I open this uh, thing up, it's gonna make me not like this. It's terrible. Um, here's something cast in for sculpted in monster clay. So this is the original of what you saw earlier. So he's been he's been put through it and that's because he was put into a silicon mold and then tore out. And then I kind of roughly sculpted him back into place just, just so I could show him like this. So he's got some tears and some silicone in there and stuff, but he's all right. So you can see this here, the this different color here. Uh, these are, this is another type of clay called epoxy clay. And so it's two part epoxy. You, uh, you mix the two parts and then you can sculpt it. The great thing about this stuff is it's hard. You know, I'm not mushing the hand around when I move this. 
Whereas if it was this kind of clay, you can see it bend his ear. So, so you don't want to you don't want to have sensitive areas having to deal with that. So I sculpted it in epoxy clay, and it worked out really well. I also could take these off individually and cast. Them make their own mold for them, the feet, the hands. Uh, his jaw, I took off the jaw, so I had a mold for this and I had a mold for that. Oh, sweet. So, great stuff about this is it's reusable, um, but you have to, like in small pieces, you can move it, uh, but you can see right now I can handle it fairly well. It, it's not really hard, but it's it's pretty stiff. You, don't, you can handle it. Um, with when I took this to show the client, it was in a hot car, and monster clay doesn't take temperature really well. Uh, it melts at a really low temperature, and so he was kind of sagging down. It's like, oh, prop him up, try to get him normal to show people but uh, <laughs> if you're doing you know larger stuff uh, you want to use these clays that are built for the larger stuff if you try to do this in a like a super sculpy a polymer clay it's going to be really expensive. Okay. all right so we covered epoxy clay uh, next up is wax so I just got into wax. Uh, I got this. Wax is great because it's really hard. Um, it. I just got started with this, so I'm I'm just learning it. But so far, it's pretty fantastic. The problem is you have to have a hot wax tool uh, to melt the stuff because it it'll do that. I can just melt that and stick it back together. Uh, but it's, it also, you can use an alcohol torch, which is essentially a Molotov cocktail, because you, you light it, you heat up your tools, do stuff, use the torch, whatever it takes. Um, but still, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, for someone who's used to having to smash things or accidentally smash things while you're working on it, uh, it's nice to be able to handle something. Okay. So finally, sorry, I got that. Um, finally, we go to polymer clay, which most of the sculptures you saw in the beginning were polymer clay. Uh, when you search for polymer clay stuff, you usually find beads, jewelry. You find figures there, the really round, colorful sculptures. All of that's great, uh, but it's not something that I'm interested in. Uh, so, on to polymer clay. So, like I said, you've got the, the colored sculpture, colored clay, so that you can uh, build your sculpture out of that and not have to paint it or anything. If I would have opened this up from the start, uh, I probably would have never became a sculptor because you start working on this and your hands get all whatever color this is. And um, I'm just picky, that's not for me. So um, I, I don't use that. If I use it, it's to mix it in with another brand, like a, a gray or a beige, to make that color. Like, uh, like this. This was... Uh, this was super sculpy mixed with green, and it didn't mesh off into my hands too much, so it was up. It, it sure beats some painting something when you have a large thing. Okay, so that's colored clays. The one most people are familiar with is super sculpy. It comes in a beige and it comes in a gray. They say this is firm and they say this is the flesh color. Uh, 
this does have a little bit of a translucency to it that is kind of nice. Whereas this one is just beige. There is a slight difference. I wouldn't let it hold you up. Uh, the gray is is firm because the a lot of the oil has been like it didn't have as much oil put into it. But what you'll see over time is these boxes. This one's not so bad, but there's a discoloration, and that's because it bleaches that the oil that's in the polymer clay. And so eventually, this will be firm. It'll just be baked. Really, if I'm making the face, I'll use the beige. And if I'm making something that I want to see uh, the fine details of, I don't know if that's coming through, but you can see there's on his tentacles, there's little lines and stuff. It just makes those easier to see than on the face. So on these two different ones, um, the Craftsmart is the Michaels brand, and it's pretty great. I used it for the, my last commission was the hockey player, and I used it for that, and it was fantastic. I was really surprised. It, it's not extremely cheaper, but it is cheaper, so every bit helps. Where's the Super Sophie's? Fourteen ninety nine, or was it that time? Or so, Got it. I tend to buy in bulk, use a lot, or use my Michael's coupon. Whenever. Okay. Um. So one of the great things about Super Sculpey is you can bake it, and it's ready to roll. You can paint it and do whatever you need to do. Um, whereas those other clays I showed, there's extra steps involved. Not for most people. Uh, okay. So I'm going to get started on armature because the clay by itself is going to fall down. And that goes for all the clays that I showed you. They're just going to, some will sag and some will just fall. It just depends. You can do something large and blocky like this, and you don't need an armature. But if I was to put arms on him, he would need an armature, legs or anything. Ball. Okay, so when I first started, I didn't know what I was doing. I saw somebody take one of these figures and bend it all out on one side and bend it all out on the other side, put the two pieces together in the middle. and. That's a lot of work. <clears throat> I'm a very, uh, let's get something going kind of person. Not into the character flow. So what I saw uh, Jordu Shell do, he's a, he's a Hollywood sculptor and he's great. You ever get a chance to watch the series Making Monsters? Uh, it's good. Okay, so I take and somewhere about the middle start twisting them for as much as I think a torso would be. And then find where I'm not too much. Now Jeff, can you tell us what type of wire you're using there? Yes. I didn't no, you're fine. Um so that's just, I've got it on my notes, but I haven't. Um, so the wire that I'm using here is armature wire. It's aluminum. And so that gives me arms and legs. Won't look like it. Though. Okay. Got a sort of guy here. Okay, so this is aluminum wire. Um, when I first started, I didn't have aluminum wire. I had, I don't have it handy, but I had, like, you go to the hardware store and find some wire and you used it. Uh, you could use a coat hanger. The problem with using something that isn't aluminum is 
if you need to bend him into position, uh, it works great. But if you've got clay on here and now you need to bend it into position, you're going to mush the clay instead of bend the wire. Whereas the aluminum wire is going to have some heat. So that's really the main reason for using the aluminum wire. Uh, if you try to buy it locally, you will get like uh, three feet for the same price I pay at Dick Blick for 50. So, oh, wow. So I don't know why that is, but man, I went into a store and was like, oh, you, no, I'm not paying that. <laughs> so, so this is nine gauge. Um, I use it for everything. If I need it thicker, I will double it up and put it in a cordless drill and wind it up so that it's done. Um, this works well for me. So a good way to go about it. But if you're just trying to figure out if it's for you, any wire. There's nothing magical about the wire. So after you get a, a body, big body here, what I do is I take floral wire. This floral wire you can get at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. It's just really thin wire. And I wrap it around the arms and the legs. And all that's doing is, is giving something for the clay to stick on. If you just leave it a tube, it's real easy for it to slide around. And that gets, that gets pretty good. So here's your character. You can... You can use a fancy board like this, where you've drilled holes in it that fit the size of your armature wire. Because this seems silly, but this is one of the things I thought with really early on uh, was, man, how do I work on this thing? And I tried magnet stuff. I tried all kinds of stuff. What I found was if you just take a board, drill a bunch of evenly spaced holes, He'll stand up and you can work on him. The reason I don't just glue him down to a board to begin with is I may want to change the pose and I may want to break his leg in order to do so. Uh, you know, if I've baked it, I may go ahead and just break his leg again. Because if you did it once, you can do it again. Uh, don't be afraid to rework it. If, if it's wrong, it's wrong. Uh, convincing yourself it's right will not help you. I know. I've done it many times. Um, so the reason that I don't just glue him down is I may have to get in here and work on him upside down and trying to hold that upside down and all of that. It's just a mess. So I just put him down into whatever holes are the closest fit for the pose I want. And that's what I do. So now you've got something that's going to hold your clay. This stuff is expensive. So what you want to do is take aluminum foil. And bulk him out. Just wrap it around there. Bulk him out. And then use your clay over that. So I've got one here. So this is my demo guy. He was originally going to be a uh, Frankenstein monster. So that's why his body is so blocky. Um, but you can see I just put aluminum foil around there. I put a, a roll of Super Sculpey over that and then baked it. So he's, he's baked and ready to go. So now I can pose him. Some, I'm a monster waiting for the bus. Kind of pose. Uh, hopefully, you don't do that. Try to put him in some kind of dynamic pose, but he is Frankenstein, so whatever. <laughs> um, so now that I've got this guy started, uh, I need to put clay on here. And so if I take clay. If I put clay on there, uh, it just falls off. It's really, 
it, it sticks to me as much as it sticks to you. So that doesn't do you any good. What I learned from the Shefflet brothers uh, is take Vaseline and just the slightest amount. I use the lid so that I'm not gooping it on. I'll, if I run out up here, I'll goop some on and then I'll run it on. Just so it's the smallest bit possible so I can make it shiny. And then the clay will stick to it and not fall off near as easy. So it's like magic. <laughs> so um, it, this also works if you're doing glass. Like I've taken glass and created a steampunk uh, jar with a diving helmet on top, uh, play around it, bake the whole jar and anything and work fine. Anything that won't uh, melt or break at 225 degrees should work fine. Um, all right. So that's essentially it. You put the clay around the body. So. Do you not bulk up the body uh, with the rest of the body with a little bit of foil, or do you just go straight to clay with, like, say if you were doing his arms or his legs, would you just go straight to clay, or would you bulk it up with aluminum foil first? It'll depend on my mood and the size. Uh, for something this size, I would probably just bite the bullet and pay for the price of the clay. Uh, because you get... Uh, I'm very time-oriented. Uh, time is very precious to me. Uh, and so... If I have to pay a little more to bulk out the clay the way I want, I'm fine with that, as opposed to uh, wrapping the aluminum foil around it. And then when you put, you know, aluminum foil does not roll up into the nicest, prettiest thing. And so yeah. when, you, when you have lumpy bumpy and then you put clay over it, it becomes lumpy bumpy. And then you have to do another round to smooth it out. So it really depends on the size and mostly my mood. Generally, I'll bulk out the body, maybe the legs, uh, then the arms, unless it's a real muscular person who's going to cost them. Uh, I work. I learned that working on potbelly mammoth, where his pot belly just kept getting bigger and bigger, and using <laughs> more and more clay. I'm like holy crap! All right, <clears throat> so. Covered this, covered the armature. Uh, let's get into actually sculpting something. Uh, while I've got this here, let me show you. Kind of covered. I think now it's just as good as it is. Okay, so with tools, uh, your best tool is your hand. Just mush this down onto the body. Flat, and you're taking the two pieces of clay and making so hands are pretty easy to do that with very sensitive to your fingertips but let's say it's somewhere where you can't get into or you've got a lot to do that with if there's an eye here and an eye here and you're trying to work on a nose you're just going to smear those things while you get your big hands in there. so for tools I use very few, really. I have these, which are ball styles. These come in a pack. I think they're made for making paper flour or something, like you push it into the paper and it makes a pedal. I don't know. But I use those. I've got six different sizes on here. So depending on how far I need to get in or how tight of space I'm working in, uh, I use these. Uh, I put these on here because they roll around. That is, uh, the other tool I use is just a spatula. This is a uh, furnishing tool from uh, like a leather store. And so it has this nice flat scoopy end on it. Just use those to push the clay. Because these are smaller tools, 
they end up leaving a lot of marks, which is fine. It just takes more time to smooth it out. Whereas where I used my hand, it didn't have those little tool marks on it. So, so we'll see some of that. Uh, the other tool I used is this little thing. It's a homemade tool. It's a stick with a piece of brass that has been sharpened to a knife edge. And I use that for hair. And that is fantastic tool uh, if you're going to make hair. So those are pretty much my tools. I do have a, a brush. It's just as you work on this, you'll get fingerprints and stuff. And people ask me all the time, how do you get rid of the fingerprints? Do that. Get rid of them. That's a ruined brush. Never useful for anything other than this, but still great. Um, but since this is kind of a not expecting you to be a sculptor, uh, but just uh, you may want to use it for your character's designs or to get shading or you know, that kind of information. Uh, make your own tool. This is a popsicle stick with a uh, stick pin. It's a glass glass bead stick pin. Shove huh. it in there, and you have this tool. So. The other thing is I have five minutes of epoxy clay. And if I have clay left over, I'll make myself tools or uh, teeth or horns or something like that, just so you're not wasting them. Scary. You can just make your own tool. You don't have to. You don't have to get fancy. Again, there's no magic tool. There are people who use wooden bamboo ones. Uh, there's people who use like, the dentist tools. They all work. And whatever works best for your brain, just use that. You don't need every tool they make. It won't help you. Okay. So let's get started with our demo. While I'm setting that up, is there any other questions? How hard are the bristles on that brush do you have? Uh, so it is a, a stiffer brush. This is uh, this is the Artist Loft. They come in a pack, a blister pack of them. Uh, it's not very big. This is a number six flat. Or was it a six flat at one time? Uh, these have, they're not like watercolor brushes where they're super soft. They're more acrylic kind of brushes. And if it's too soft, it's just not going to do it. So... The clay is tougher than you think, even though you do tend to smash it white. Here's a... I was wondering if it made little marks on there. That's what I was curious about. No, um, it, it it will if it if you jab it into it and you're really scrubbing it. It will. Yeah. But if you're just lightly going across it, you'll be fine. Now, okay. this here is a, more like a watercolor brush. The bristles just are super smooth. And so if you yeah. find that this is too heavy-handed... You can use something. Um, all right, so I'm going to. Oh, by the way, uh, if I go to like a drink and draw, I take this leather pouch, uh, and these are the tools that go in. So there's. Those are my essential tools. I use them for everything. I have multiple copies of them so that I have a to-go pouch. The other thing I put in there is this contact lens case. And it has Vaseline. So that I don't have to carry this awkward jar of Vaseline. <laughs> Um, all right, so let me take off. 
I was silly and got the uh, fancy ring that played the. <laughs> Alright. Alright, so what I'm gonna do is if I go to a drink and draw, I take this uh, wooden plank and I drill a hole in it, dot all the way through, and uh, that's what I use to. Usually in that time frame, I can only sculpt the head. Sometimes it goes long and I'll start adding a body to it that doesn't have an armature and so the body will slide down. Generally, this is my setup for like a drink. And uh, since I'm home, I'm not going to mess with that. Look if I find where I put my stuff. Because there's a folder. Oh. This is great, uh, especially if it's a drink and draw. You know, it holds up easily for carrying. You can put your clay in it in a bag pretty easy. Is that piece aluminum too? Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to use instead is, and that's a good way to bust ears off, uh, is what I just did, laying it down on its side. Bust ears off every, every time. Set that over there. I bust his ears off over there. Okay. This is some contraption I made, and I'm I'm not sure what its original intent was. But this top piece was some kind of drill something. But then I took a really heavy wheel bearing that I got at some like farm supply. So it's super heavy. And what it has is this here will let you lock into place with an iron wrench. So now I have this really heavy, sturdy thing I can work on. Because oh, nice. I used to work with this in hand. And as I said, as you're pushing here, you're smashing back there. And so anything you can do to prevent that so what I have is I have uh, uh, I'm about to get to a point where I'll probably shut up and start answering questions so if I've been rambling on that's why I wanted to get to where I'm going to be quiet and try and work on stuff so it'd be better to answer questions uh, but what I've got is a piece of clay in my left hand and what it's really doing is warming up because this stuff, as it sits, uh, it becomes used to that shape and stays that shape. So you want to work it with your hands and warm it up, and that helps get the uh, get to where fixotropic applies to uh, clay. That's what it is it's solid, and then the more you work it, it becomes more useful. So. What I'm doing here is I'm just jabbing that wire into the head. So give him a little bit of structure around that hole just to hook him off. That's where neck will be. Mostly for now, just trying to get it where it's stuck on. There. All right, so now we have a head shape. So this is just a ball of clay that I've rolled into a ball and then made kind of an almond shape for a head. Not expecting this to be a masterpiece, but it should give an idea of what we're trying to do. To give you an idea of how quickly, once you get used to these materials, you can render something out and have that piece for, like I said, getting the, the lighting figuring out how that works but, you know if nothing else <clears throat> maybe you don't know how the back of your character like surprisingly a lot of artists they don't know like the what the full turnaround of their character is mm -hmm. or they don't draw it enough that they remember so 
having something like this can really help you with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that we need to create some kind of multi-horned demon. So these are some horns that I created in epoxy clay. So I'll be able to jab those in without any problem. I've also got these eyes over here uh, made of epoxy clay. Again, don't waste the material. It's expensive, so just make a bunch of eyes. And nothing. Um, okay, so we're going to jab these horns into this guy. That's about right, so just jab there and over here. Just making a hole so that we can push these together. Let me figure out. Yeah, I want them coming back like this. I think that. Can you see that well enough? So, now to make sure that those don't move around on me the whole time. A couple of worms of clay. Put it around here. Yeah. Here. See why we're doing this? When you look at horns, there's There's usually something there to support them, so go ahead and do that. Something that I'll do here is I'll just shove it back. That's the, again, the nice thing about the aluminum wire is it bends easy. Take it wherever you need to go. So all I'm trying to do is add some support to these so they don't fall apart. I'm trying to figure out. I'm spend too much time blending it in. Because what I'm doing now is essentially figuring out what does this guy look like? Let's say I'm designing a character and I'm not sure what he wants to look like. I've drawn it to death on paper, so maybe I just need something else to look at. I can look at something like that and I can go, hmm, do I want the horns to come closer together? Uh, do I want them to just go straight back? Do I want to be silly and turn them around the other way? You know, it's, it's way faster to do this here than it is to do it by drawing out, you know, the different ones. And then it's easy, also easy to turn it and look at it and go, yeah, I think that has a flow to it. So, I like that. Let's put the little play in there to make it stuck. Something that I recommend uh, is if you're not sure about something, don't get rid of it. You know, there's a tendency that if you're not sure, it's wrong. And you, you may just need a little bit of time for it to set and go, yeah, maybe I do like that. It just needs this. Instead of, nope, didn't like it. I'm not sure. It must be wrong. Self doubt is really a uh, an artist problem. Uh, you know what I'm thinking right now mostly is, please don't turn out bad. Please don't look terrible. You, <laughs> You're terrible at this. Why did you even? Uh, why did they even ask you to do this? But as time goes on and you you're able to produce better stuff, that voice you're able to shove it further to the side and go, eh, yeah, I hear you, but you said over in the corner I got stuff to do. All right. So now we need some eyes. You know, same thing with the uh, typical drawing. 
the eyes got to be in the the right place. Yeah. He's got eyes, but he's not looking very menacing, so give him a brow. So from here, it's just character design and uh, you know the same thing, taking some clay, mushing that clay into the other clay, and then making it not look like you just mushed two pieces of clay together. So the theme disappears. But while I work a little bit, is there, you guys have any questions? Sometimes you say you uh, draw this character before. Do you draw a lot of your stuff before you sculpt it? I draw. And, you see, I'm thinking nothing before I sculpt it. Uh, but there's probably like something I'm forgetting. Seems like there's been something I've drawn. But that is something that surprises most people is that um, this is how I sketch out. Like I would do a 2D drawing off of rather than do a 2D drawing and then do. Gotcha. Right now he's he's looking pretty cartoony, but when we put those pieces of clay down, he's going to stop looking. Uh, something else that I do is that if you if you watch a sculpting video from a lot of artists, they will build a whole bunch of stuff up and then scratch it all down uh, that works fairly well with uh, most clays except for polymer clay if you try to scratch at this stuff it just it tears depending on how soft it is it tears and looks ugly and then you got to clean up all this stuff anyway so what i do is i typically take a piece of clay about the size that i think that i'll need i will break it in half and then shape it into what I need. Okay. So now I've got two pieces in my that started out the same size. So that helps me keep that symmetry. Because you don't want this half looking radically different. Than this. Is maintaining symmetry uh, sculpting will is it a challenge to do that um it doesn't seem to be for me i don't like i said it, it just i'll just if i need something on both sides i will break off and that goes for building out the arms too if i need to break off a piece i half it and put that piece on so i don't seem to have trouble with that i know that um or if i do i'm just unaware but um i've <laughs> Seen a lot of sculptors talk about put your stuff in the mirror and that new perspective on it uh, gives you a fresh look at it and you may see that it's completely wrong i've done that with my sculptures and went looks like it's in the mirror i don't i don't know so either i don't have a very good eye for that but on the rare occasion that i do digital sculpting i'll do like uh, i've seen you do gary where i've got my main window and then i've got another window with it reversed. Uh, I know uh, Art, I can't remember the name of the program. Art Rage, that's it. Art Rage will let you 
have that second window and it flips. So yes. I have a thumbnail of it, and that's pretty great for catching things. Again, because I'm not a digital artist, so I need that. Right. What I what I do Ooh. traditional drawing, I tend to flip. Uh, I'll take it and stick it against the window, or flip it, or just stand in the mirror with it and look at it. Uh, it, it it's cool that that works for sculpting too. That that just goes across the board yep. with art. It, it's just really neat. This is very very neat. Yeah, something that I think that is, like I said, I think it's valuable for people to sculpt, uh, even if they're two D artists, is because everything translates. You know, uh, if this head is shaped wrong, whatever detail I add to this, no matter how many horns or cool stuff I add to it, it's going to look terrible. Uh, so the big forms have to be there. Uh, you know, you mentioned in your uh, character design uh, lesson about the uh, silhouette. You know, it still has to be able to read from across the room. Yeah. You know, all of those things still apply. Uh, when it comes to value, uh, you've got the shading you know, the shadow here. If you don't have enough depth in the eyes, you know, or they're, they're bulgy or whatever, you know, it's, the, it's not gonna have the right value in there. So it all applies. It just may may not be something you think of right now. It all still applies. And then of course color we need to paint. So we've done a little bit of work here. Uh, he's looking a little cartoony, so let's lay some display down. see that yes I tried to put the camera between me and the sculpture and it just ended up a wiggly mess doing this listening to music or on my own time we wouldn't be going near as fast but still I think it's important to move with some sincerity at least for figuring out what you want you know because if, if I spend four days on this making it perfect and decide I hate it that's four days wasted so So he's not looking very menacing at this point. He's looking kind of derby. Maybe increase this brow and gloss over. Help these eyes. So I'm just pushing the whole thing. If you've never worked with Super Sculpey, uh, when it's the perfect. Uh, condition it is uh, it's like bubble gum <laughs> uh, so I've been using roughly this uh, size if I need uh, bigger areas uh, to smooth out like uh, bigger areas I'll move to bigger the styles Also give him a chin. 
I'm just gonna push like that. I don't know if you if you saw that, but how quickly that changed to a more menacing character. Yeah. So, whereas if I was to draw all that and then erase it and go, oh, I don't like all of that, try something else. It just it takes a little longer. At least for my mind. Out here. Bottom lip. More to each other. So at this point, I don't have the world's greatest uh, demon here, but. I have some. Something is always better than nothing. So let's revisit some of this stuff. Uh, let's say, does he need a horn right there? Maybe not. Maybe that looks dumb. Maybe these are throwing it off. Maybe they need to be broken like a hellboy. You know, you, you essentially have, at this point, a, a doll. I hate to use that word, but I guess the proper term is maquette. You have a maquette that you can modify pretty quickly and easily to figure out, you know, what do you want this guy? Does he need... Maybe he needs pointy ears. Maybe you like that. Maybe it's too much pointy. Maybe you want to have it round. You know, all of these things are very quick for a 2D artist to figure out. Am I improving this thing or making it worse? And really all you're doing is just moving around to play and if you don't like them, it's way faster than erasing them. Maybe he needs a thicker bridge through here. Something that points down gives it more of an angle. Really sell those angles. And for brow. Maybe that one. So it's, that's pretty much my demonstration. I mean, I could sit here and keep working on this, but essentially that's how you can use uh, polymer clay to quickly rough something out, try some different versions of something, and uh, figure out if it's, it's a character you want to. You also get the nice thing about a turnaround. So, now you you know what it looks like from a different angle you know what it looks like this way lit from below you know, a scene overlooking lava or something i had a little uh, flashlight handy you could see that it, how it looks from below or whatever so it, to me it's a pretty great tool it really helps me when i work on 2d art to have something physical to look at. I, I am not a creative artist uh, unless I'm playing with clay. And then for some reason it triggers, you know, again, because you have something. You have, oh, that looks cool or it doesn't. And it gives you a way to work. I know, Gary, you'll do that with uh, drawing crazy lines around something to build up. Okay, now that's led me into something. Uh, this is essentially the same thing, just a different way. Getting the shape, the, pretty much the shape language down, and interesting shapes, essentially. Yeah, essentially. Yeah, um, you know, and it's let's say you hate those eyes, pop them out. You know. 
It really is a... Maybe he needs an eye there. <laughs> you know, or he, maybe he needs bigger eyes. Bigger teeth. It's just all... It's just clay. You know? So, it's like a sketch. Until you bake this thing, um, you can just keep working on it. Can you cast, uh, so you can bake that. Yeah. yeah. Can you cast it after you baked it? Yeah, so let me grab something real quick. Okay. So, when I did the Mammy character for Nate, when I was done with it, I created a Disney-fied version of it. So, right. Oh, that's so, nice. So this is my Disney-fied version. Uh, wow. It's just, uh, I don't know, very Disney-esque. So I did that, and then I made a mold of him. And so he can be cast. Oh, cool. Right. So... He can be cast. This is baked. And so baked it, made a cast of it, uh, poured in the resin, pulled that out. And he can be painted to be Mammy Colors. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, what did you use to paint that? What's that? What did you use to paint that? Oh, so... All of the characters you saw were painted in Americana craft paint. So, uh, okay. Um, I have, if I'm doing uh, like 2D art to sell, I'll use golden acrylic. But for, or if it's for a, a commission, then I'll do golden acrylic. But for stuff I have around the house, you know, it works just as well to me. The only, the only thing with paints to me, are the, uh, the pigmentation. Uh, higher quality brands have a thicker pigment, or more pigment in them. But with acrylic, you can only put so much pigment in it before the binder doesn't work properly. Yeah. Or paint, you can load it up. But with acrylic, there's only so much you can put in there. So if it works for you, uh, use it. I know a an artist that I met a few years ago that he worked for McFarland Toys. Uh, worked for McFarland Toys. He made uh, out of wax, super realistic sports character. And uh, he would he now makes uh, ceramic pieces. And if they're ceramic pieces like I showed earlier, those are all he paints with craft paint too. So Americana craft thing. Nice. I know. Always notice with McFarlane uh, action figures, it's almost like they put a base black or a dark color underneath, and then they paint on top of it. Yeah, that's one of the nice things about uh, the gray Super Sculpey is it already gives you that mid tone. Yes. So rather than trying to go all the way one way or another. It's like working on uh, uh, toned paper, sketching on toned paper. You can yes. either way. So that makes it. I, uh, I used to hate painting these things. Like, I like sculpting them, and then I really like, I left this the color it is because I like the, the form that you see. Yeah. But people really want to see color. And that there's right. polymer, right? Right, that the gray maybe is polymer. Uh, this is a um, can't think of oh, the, the, the oh, name. No, of I mean it. the gray sculpt of. Oh, the, yeah. So that's super sculpty. The super firm. Sculpt, okay. Oh, they even have a elephant on the. Uh, front. Yeah, I oh. should have put two and two together. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, they. Um, it, it's really nice. I, depending on, like, if you, I don't know where the, so this, this 
craft mart, the uh, clay from uh, Michael's, they uh, have different colors of this too. So just get the gray in it. I mean, it's fairly cheap comparatively and uh, works really well. Heck yeah. Here's a question for you. Have you had to do anything that's like transparent or like glass in one of your sculpts? Like, uh, let's say transparency. Say you wanted to do like um, somebody, which now that I think about it, you'd probably do it with a cast and a sculpt. But uh, if you wanted to see the skeletons or the innards of like a character, like you sculpt the outside of it and then like you want to see the guts and stuff. I, I assume you'd have to, you can only do that with uh, making molds. One out of like a see through acrylic and one that's painted correct. Like you can't sculpt, have a sculpture like that. Right. When I when I did this, this is a, a lady astronaut. Oh, cool. And she, what I really wanted was a clear helmet. And I looked at all kinds of ways to do that from um, finding different uh, like the Christmas ornament that you get where it's a clear Christmas ornament and comes in two pieces and you're supposed to put your own stuff in it. Um, yeah. I looked at that. I looked at uh, doing a a vacuum form you know where I could take this a clay mold and then use a vacuum form to suck it down and then cut out that and that would have worked for for this but i didn't have a vacuum form and it was like too much work to get, yeah, to get put one together so i didn't do that but that's what i would do is i would try to uh, either find a piece of plastic that fit or do a vacuum form uh, over it or I probably wouldn't do it. I would love to do, like, if there was something I could use that would be clear, like really clear, uh, that would be great. But most things, by the time you thin them down to where I would need them, are pretty clear. But yeah, good question. All right. Oh, one thing I might mention too, uh, just to artists in general, is I've started switching out my art station with a stand-up desk. That's how I'm easy to walk away from it so much. Um, because I sit down all day long. It's just where I feel like I need to exercise more. So, so. That's what happened during this past year and this year, man. Everyone just stayed in. It got crazy. So don't feel yeah. bad, dude. <laughs> I'm used to going to meetings and stuff, but now I just go to that all day long. So stand up desk. Highly recommend. All right. That's what I want. <laughs> uh, Office Depot had a sale on uh, these, so I bought two. <laughs> oh, nice. How much are and they, if you don't mind me asking? Two fifty. It's not bad. But they they raise, you know. Um, they have a motor to raise them up and down, so it's pretty great. Oh, sweet! Ah, then your stuff falls off, so don't do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, this this brings up a good point. Uh, one of the reasons that I am trying to switch over to wax is with Super Sculpey. You know, it's so brittle. You know, it's so easy to snap this trunk. Uh, and then if you do, you've got a wire armature in there. And so it won't ever go back together. Uh, and you can't bake it again because obviously it's, uh, you know, you'll boil the paint. So you can't. Yeah. So switching to wax, um, I'm trying to do more things like this where I can cast it and make something less brittle. It really sucks to like, like things like this where I just want to give my friends, you know, hey, here's something that I made. Uh, you know, it's a cool toy and uh, have to worry about it getting broken or, you know, something that I learned as a sculptor is that people love to touch stuff. 
and they are <laughs> they're like a magnet to the most breakable thing. So like on this, it's this trunk. So they're like zeroed in on. Oh, let me see that. You know, and they're, they're just whatever is tangled on here or fragile, they just. So. Yeah. All right. All right. Any other questions or? Oh, um, kind of a weird question. Did were you here? Did you see that um, uh, that dis that display they had with the skull dude who did like all the stuff for like Paranorman and uh, Monster House and stuff? They did a show for him here in town. And oh it, no! It was like all the sculpts and stuff. I still have pictures from it. It was amazing. Well, and Coraline, the heads up. Coraline, the Coraline sculpts were here too. Huh? Yeah. No, I I had no idea. I I don't watch the news. I don't. Um, I don't know. I'm pretty much in the dark. I get off work. Oh, well, dude, and come this down was years ago, though, man. This is probably back oh. in 2012 or something. Oh no, no, I wasn't yeah, interested yeah. in stuff back then. I was thinking, man, surely one of my buddies would have said, "Hey, man." <laughs> but, yeah, dude. Like, if if this were like now, I was. Yeah, this would have even. This would have been in the Discord. I like. Yeah. We're all fucking going to this. <laughs> All right. Um, phew. I think that covers it all. Excellent, man. Well, thank you. This was awesome, man. Oh, no problem. Uh, thanks for having me uh, give this presentation. And uh, you know, I hope that you try it. You know, anyone who watches this, if you oh, made yeah. it this far, man, give it a try. It's, uh, well, Watching it helped me solve so many problems that I've had with sculpting before and the things that kind of kept me away from it a little bit for a while because I always felt like it's one of those things like I'll dabble a tiny bit, but then I back out really quick. I'm like, mm, <laughs> you know, this will break and that'll break and the things I want to make, it's like I can't make them the way I want. And then yeah, I just got to back out. You know, it's um, – I don't it, – it's funny. I don't have a, any toys or uh, – anything i see your wall back there just filled with them um, uh, it just it just wasn't a uh a thing this side is us. like crazier because the other part of my office <laughs> so if i were you and with your talent um as an artist in general man i'd be making my own hot toys you know if nothing else just set on the shelf because i've, I've gone to like a toy store and picked up a figure and been like man that's like I was looking to get inspired, like a museum or something. Be like, hey, yeah. this is ought to be cool. And then like, well, it's a face, I guess. But, <laughs> so, yeah, I, will I, say would... this. I did this. This was a while, uh, a long time ago. I'd say probably like 20, 2015 or so. Like I did, I made this. Oh, cool. A little specimen here. Let me take him out. Give me this little specimen guy here. Cool. I painted him with acrylic because I wanted him to look wet. Yeah. Like it, and the, one of the, my favorite things I did is I painted over, painted the eye black, and then I went over it with a light pink. So like it's uh -huh. almost like transparent. You can see its eyeballs underneath, like a fetus. Uh huh. You can see the back of it there. Nifty. So what got you into uh, deciding to do that? Um, I I always wanted to make my own specimen like oh. creatures, and, and I had this jar, and I was like, man, I'm gonna make this little weird specimen. Like you can see underneath where I had them on a stick, there. <laughs> and I and he's not one piece. I like I hollowed them out and shit. He's super hollow. Yeah. And it was cool. They were like, yeah. And then you tell me about the paint too, and I was like, man, it's like I want to use that stuff, man. Where is this? This, yeah, I made this a long time ago, too. Um, yeah. Let me, let me grab one real quick. Man, 
man, this is cool, huh? That is really cool. I'm like, man, you just helped me solve like problems I've been trying to figure out forever. <laughs> All right, so here are. Here's an old sculpture of a dragon. Uh, find the right angle on the camera here. So he's got wings, and so for the ribs, this is all armature wire. And so then I laid the clay down across it, and then I went on the other side and laid a, a layer of clay across it. Now. For something like this with the wings, you want to use, you, you can either roll it all out yourself or you can get a pasta machine and make flat sheets and save yourself some effort. But, so that's how I do the, the wings like this, two layers of clay along armature wire. Then for, this is a, mermaid I did Whoa. long ago and painted it bronze just as real bronze, bronze is expensive but paint is cheap so uh, it has these leaves here uh, people love, as I said they love to touch, and these are all made from uh, epoxy so that they're not going to snap off and that's just the armature wire at the front but you asked about long hair um, so this is the her hair, and it's using that same tool that I mentioned where it's just a wedge of uh, brass made into a knife point. Uh, but you could use a butter knife, you know, whatever you can use to get in there to make hair. But you can see I planted it against the body. Maybe you can't. I planted it against the body so that it has some support. If you have it out here flowing and beautiful, Somebody will want to touch it and they will snap it. So either epoxy that or put it against the body. Can, now, can she use wire for that? Like for the hair? Like if she wanted to do big anime hair? Yeah, so you can use a, a thicker um, floral wire. It, is, it comes in a paddle form over in the uh, fake flower section. And you can wire it out and then have it grow up. But again, depending on how uh, how thin it gets, you can still push through it and break it through that wire. So really, if it's hanging out, use epoxy clay. Yeah. Dave's epoxy sculpt is what a lot of people use. Uh, as I said, I buy in bulk because I use a lot of materials. I use magic sculpt and it uh, comes in a two and a half pound for this, and then it's a companion with the two and a half pounds, so five pounds. But it's just, this one's kind of old, so it looks kind of funky, but it's just two part epoxy. I have a white and a gray. Use those accordingly. All right. Any other questions? I don't know. I think I think I've asked them all mine. Okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> this give it is a try, awesome. and uh, let me see what you did, mate. Because it's pretty easy. Uh, it can be discouraging, but um, you know, when you drew the first time, you were probably terrible at it, no matter what your mom said. So. Yes. <laughs> Well, this is excellent. Uh, yes, thank you, and uh, keep sharing your stuff on the Discord. Um, and if you have more things that you would like to share, man, keep sharing them. We have a section in there called Show and Tell. Mm -hmm. Drop stuff in there, man. Seriously. Awesome. All right. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>